About a week ago, Besiege got a pretty big update with a lot of interesting changes. Now, among the new blocks are the axle and the length detector, and seeing these, I wanted to try to make a realistic truck. To power this, I was gonna need a pretty strong engine, and I wanted to start out with that. Now, surprisingly, I've never made a V engine before, so I wanted to try to give that a go now. To start out, though, you can see here, I added a bunch of steering hinges onto this block, and by doing that, you can see now, as I start to rotate one of them, they all rotate a little bit more. Now to show you what I mean here, you can see I put down four pistons, and now as I start to rotate these down, you can see that each one is 90 degrees ahead of the other. Now just by putting down a wheel here, you can see I'm easily able to spin this up, and if I can find some way to drive these hinges around, I should be able to create a simple inline engine. Now of course though, I do want to make a V engine and not an inline engine, but to convert it over, it's actually pretty easy. All I need to do here is double up my hinges, and you can see now trying it out, it does sort of work, but the hinges are staying together and I want them to all be able to freely move. Now to solve that, I was able to shrink them down a little bit like this and given this a try now, you can see each one's able to individually move back and forth. Now eventually I'm going to want to angle all of these out like this and you can see now I'm going to have two banks of cylinders on each side and that's going to create that V. Now with all these hinges in place though, the next thing I wanted to do is start to work on one of the pistons, but I realized pretty quickly that getting the angles right for this was kind of difficult. Now I spent a little bit of time trying to figure out exactly what angle I need to rotate the hinge to match up with the piston, and I found it was somewhere around 38 degrees. Now, after rotating everything up in place here, you can see now I'm adding on some sliders, and that's let the piston freely move up and down. Now, I spent some time shrinking this down as much as I could, and once I got the piston relatively small, you can see I mirrored it over to the other side, and now as I start to rotate the wheel around, you can sort of see the engine starting to take shape. And with that, of course, I copy this over three more times, and after rotating all of the cranks by 90 degrees, you can see now, as I spin up the engine, how each of the Vs comes up at a different time. Now, one small issue I had here is that the firing order right now is set to be from the last piston all the way up to the first one. Now, in this configuration, the engine will run fine, but there's going to be a lot of extra vibration, so to solve that here, you can see I changed it, so instead of having each of these pop up sequentially, now these sections pop up a little more random randomly, which should balance things out. But now with all the pistons set up here, next I wanted to start adding some power. Now you can see I put down a bunch of water cannons, and originally this is what I wanted to try to use to power each piston. And after I shrunk them down a little bit to slide past each other easier, turning them on here, they do seem to provide some power, but of course I am going to need some way to time these cannons so they turn on and produce power. Now after adding on a steering hinge on the front here, this is going to let me rotate all the pistons the way that I want. And with that good to go, now I wanted to start working on the timings. For this, I wanted to try out using the length detector, which is one of the new blocks. Now you can see here, once I got one part of it hooked up on the crankshaft and another on the edge of the piston, my plan now is to figure out how much distance there was between the length detector and the edge of that piston, and then have it turn on only when the crankshaft rotates exactly halfway around. Now you can see here, there's a little light on the edge of this detector, and as I rotate halfway around here, it turns on, and that's going to be used to signal signal one of the cannons to start providing power. Now you can see here with just one piston, I was actually getting some movement out of this, but I was losing a lot of speed and eventually the engine would stop. With two of these hooked up here, it was doing a lot better and it did actually seem to be maintaining some amount of speed. Now after seeing that, I just hooked up the rest of these pistons here and you could also see I'm adding on torches to turn them into steam cannons. Now this actually seemed to be working pretty well here and the speed I was getting up to was really solid. Looking a little bit closer to, I could see that this last steering hinge was bending up and down a lot, and I figured if I supported it, I might be able to make the engine a lot more rigid and spin faster. So of course, I gave that a try here, and trying this out, it was going a lot faster now. This was a good amount of power, and I figured with this, I might be able to actually get this car moving. Now the next order of business here is going to be to extract power out of the engine and actually drive some wheels. To do that, you can see here, I added on another wheel, and after that, I added on another steering hinge and this is to let me keep that rigid attachment point on the edge of the engine while also being able to get the power out from the back of it. Now you could see the engine was spinning a little bit slower, but overall this was still a really good amount of speed and with that I wanted to attach up an axle here and start working on a differential. Now you can see here I attached up an axle to the top and I also added on some logs and on the bottom here I'm also attaching another axle. And with this you can see here I am able to transfer the rotation from the engine down to this bottom wheel 
And with that looking good, I replaced that wheel with a gear, and you can see now I'm adding on a large gear. Now, this is to start working on the differential here, and you can sort of see what I'm beginning to do. The main goal of the differential is to make sure that as I start turning the truck, one of the wheels is able to spin a little bit faster than the other while I'm applying power. Now, making a differential is actually the first Besiege video I ever made, and you can see here I'm using a pretty similar design. This time, though, I'm using a lot more block scaling, and you can see now the whole thing ended up being a lot more compact. With that in place though, now we need to attach it up to a wheel, and this is where I was starting to have some trouble. You can see here I'm using ropes, and the reason for that is I really don't want to use braces since they're so resistant to motion. These ropes I was hoping were going to be pretty rigid, but as you see here, they end up rotating a lot, and I couldn't really get them tight enough to the point where I felt like they could really drive the wheel around. Now after that, my next thought was using springs. Springs I thought would be a lot better since they have an adjustable amount of power, and trying them out here, once I stiffen them up, they did seem to follow the rotation in the main wheel really well. The other advantage here is if I'm not tightening them, they sort of act like I'm in neutral, which I figured could be quite useful. Now, this actually seemed to be pretty close to working, so I replaced that outside gear at the wheel, and you can see here, it still seemed to be working the same way, so I went to the other side and also added on these springs. Now, I was worried since this side was a bit longer, it might have some more problems with bending the springs around, but overall, it's still seem to be working great, and I figured this should be able to drive around the wheels. Even now, you can see I'm grabbing on the left wheel, preventing it from spinning, and the differential does seem to be working because it's still allowing the right side to spin up. This was exactly what I was looking for, and next you can see here, I'm starting to add in some axles to each side. Now this, of course, is to drive on some wheels, and you can see now, I'm adding them to the outside now. Once I had these wheels on, though, I did notice a problem. I think the extra load from the axle might have been causing some problems problems here, because I like, see that my spring system from before it was a little too weak and was allowing them to bend around all the way. Now, seeing this, I still wanted to test this out with some bigger wheels, but to get that done, I did have to use some braces between the differential and the output shaft. Now, this, of course, isn't ideal, but I figured one brace shouldn't provide too much resistance, and with that in place now, I had on some back wheels here, and I wanted to try this out on the ground. To do that, though, I had to brace the engine together a lot better, and you can see now, I'm just trying to make the whole thing a lot more rigid. With that all finished up though, you can see the car moving forward now, and overall, I was actually pretty happy with its speed. One thing I saw though, is that the engine was deforming quite badly, and fixed that, I replaced these logs with ballast. Now by turning up the mass of these ballasts a lot more, it also allowed me to turn up the power of these cannons, and you can see here, the engine isn't deforming at all. The car would kind of fall apart sometimes, but with some better bracing here, the speed I was getting up to really really wasn't that bad, and this engine seemed to be pulling a lot of weight. Now, of course, I am missing one very important feature of cars, and that's steering. To do that, you can see I added on another wheel to the bottom of this first one here, and after that, by bracing it up now, you can see it's able to hold it straight. Now, this is pretty much what we saw before, but to get some steering working, what I could do here is pull out this wheel and adding a steering hinge. Now, you can see as I rotate it back and forth, the axle also rotates, and that should let me apply power while steering. Now, trying this out here seemed to be working a lot better, and you can see I'm able to go back and forth while still making it spin. Now, this is exactly what I was looking for, and seeing this, I wanted to add in some wheels to the back. Now, at first here, you can see I just have them as unpowered wheels, and I was hoping that the front engine was going to be able to carry most of the weight. Now, I also added in the steering to the other side of the truck, and while at first, they did have it slightly reversed here, just by flipping it around, I was easily able to fix that, and you can see here, I'm somewhat able to move around. Now, you may have also noticed up to this point, I added a few extra suspension pieces on the wheels, and I was trying to make some sort of suspension system work. Now, the best design I had was just putting one suspension piece on the outside of the wheel like this, and overall, it was adding a little bit of help, but I noticed a big problem. The engine, for whatever reason, would start to bounce up and down, and it would start turning into water. Now, also, I really don't understand this one, but if I ever hit a rock, you'll notice they just start flying into the air. For whatever reason, the suspension seemed to make that a lot worse, and the natural bending of the 
wood in the car actually seem to be doing a pretty good job of smoothing it out the ride. Now, mechanically, the car actually wasn't looking too bad right now, but I didn't really like how it looked, and also, I wanted to get more power out of it. To do that, you can see here, I'm extending it further back, and I'm adding in another engine. Now, at first, this actually wasn't terrible, but I noticed it was spinning in the wrong direction here, and to solve that, I messed around with some timings, and eventually just flipped around the entire engine. And after doing that, you can see here, the wheels are spinning in the right direction now, and this is looking a lot better. Now, I did move the wheels in a little bit closer, because I realized that they were pretty far out, and after doing that, I wanted to start working on the fenders. Now, I'm not sure why this was the next thing I wanted to do here, but I figured it'd be a pretty good starting point to figure out exactly how to make the body. Now, once I got some blocks outlining that, you can see here for the rest of the car, I also started adding on some more blocks. With this, now I just started adding on all these panels here, and I knew this was gonna add on a lot of weight, but I was hoping that for the most part, I would be able to keep it down. Now, for this first design here, I pretty much just kept attaching things with wood, but I really didn't like the way it was turning out. I was having a hard time sculpting things around, and I could see here it was gonna be very heavy. Now, to solve that, I deleted off a lot of the wood panels I had before, and you can see I just left the fenders. After that, I braced everything together a bit more, and I wanted to go for a more bare-bones design to hopefully keep down the weight, but also to hopefully make it look a little bit better. Now, for the cabin here, I started making that skeleton, and overall, I thought this was already looking a bit better. Mechanically, though, it wasn't exactly a great shape. For whatever reason now, it seemed like there was too much weight, and the front wheels would instantly shear off and just get driven right into the ground. The engine also really liked to completely disintegrate, and I had to reduce its power a tiny bit to keep it in check. And I also moved up all of the cannons a little bit here to keep them from interfering with the sliders, and this seemed to help out a lot. Right now, this test is on braking mode, but at the very least, the engine actually is running, which is a step up from before. Of course, though, I did want to get this working without on braking on, so to do that, you can see here what I did is add on another steering hinge, but I'm putting it very far above the front wheel. This is providing me a little bit more stability higher up, and you can see giving this a test, it seems to be plenty strong. I was pretty easily able to drive this around, and with all that place now, I wanted to add on some glass to the front here, and once I got that in place, I also added on some more panels to the bed. Now, I was trying to reduce the weight as much as I possibly could, and you can see I also painted it up yellow. Now, with all these panels on here, my final top speed still ended up being about 12 meters per second. It's not super fast, but overall, it's actually a pretty solid speed, and if I added a proper transmission, or if I made a more powerful engine, I think I'd get this going a lot faster. Steam cannons, though, do seem to have a limit, where if you try to push them any harder, they end up just extinguishing the flame below them, and then they just turn into water. Overall, though, it's fun to finally come back and do a proper vehicle build in Besiege. But guys, if you have more ideas for what I should make a Besiege, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, till next time.